the voice before the void dot net choice bits from boat murdered by evil slug Tourette dog marijuana keyboard fox locus and stark raving mad read by the voice before the void part one intro by evil slug what follows is a succession-style let's play of the game Dwarf Fortress. In it, we chronicle the rise and fall of the epic Dwarven Fortress, Boat Murdered. Actually, it's pretty much all fall. Each ruler was given a single year of game time in which to manage the fortress. They then gave the reins over to the next player in line. Things very quickly progressed from somewhat casual daily elephant deaths to retired rulers rampaging and beating people to death while burning alive. The heavy downward slide... <laughs> the What the Fuck is Dwarf Fortress Crash Course. The thread to follow generally assumes you have a tiny bit of knowledge about the game being played. In hopes of making it an easy read for those unfamiliar, I have condensed the most important factors from the general info threads and wikis into this brief introduction. You don't need to know a thing about the game to genuinely enjoy the playthrough, but a tiny bit of knowledge does help. Here's the too-long-didn't-read-it guide first. Left to right, Elephant, Dwarf, Miasma Cloud, the purple cloud of stench that comes from rotting bodies. <laughs> For a better, <laughs> for a bit better outline of the game, read on. Impatient types and those who already know Dwarf Fortress well, please skip straight to the first update. The initial update outlines the rules by which this game was played. There aren't many, ha. Huh? Okay. What kind of game is Dwarf Fortress? In a nutshell, Dwarf Fortress is best described as a 2D base building game in the theme of Dungeon Keeper. The concept is simple, the graphics are simple, but the depth of the game is fairly awesome. Even more amazing when you realize it is all the product of a single man gaming company. The dwarves you control are somewhat autonomous. They have likes, dislikes, and needs. While you can assign them specific duties and set basic orders, they have minds of their own and will act according to how they feel. You can give them a job, but that doesn't always mean they'll do it right away. Injuries to all animals and dwarves are tracked, down to internal organs and body parts. Dwarves have moods that are affected by the things around them. They can decide to throw a party for their friends, or they might stress out under the strain and suddenly kill each other with little to no warning. Female dwarves occasionally get pregnant, and if they're exposed to trauma, say a goblin siege, they very well might miscarry. Sad thoughts caused by things of that nature can lead dwarves to tantrums or even suicide. Oh my. You begin with seven dwarves and scarce few supplies at the face of a mountain. Your only objective is to survive the elements while you build yourself as cool a fortress as you possibly can before you inevitably die. Simple enough, yes? <laughs> the game was displayed in a pseudo-ASCII style, which uses letters for objects in the game world, similar to NetHack. I hear you're groaning, but you'll quickly catch the hang of things. In the following shot, a bunch of dwarves are charging off to be trampled by elephants outside the fortress. <laughs> the cliff face bisects the picture, with the outdoors on the left and the cliff interior on the right. <laughs> I like it. I really like it. It's much better than oh, what, if I were making an ASCII uh, yeah, universe, I wouldn't make it this cool. That's something, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, it's so unique. This is a pile of dead dwarves, an elephant, and a cloud of miasma. Those are the three most prevalent features in Boat Murdered. <laughs> Miasma is the purple blotch that shows up when corpses begin to rot. It makes your dwarves angry, which usually leads to hilarity. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to be a dwarf? Dig into mountain halls and fear unholy amphibious undead elephants that scale walls and murder your entire family while you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> your wait is over. Your dream is here. And that dream is the official Goon Dwarf Fortress Succession game. <laughs> <laughs> Rules. One year equals one turn, from spring of one year to spring of the next. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Once it's your turn, you get a week from the time the link is posted to take your turn. If you start but can't finish, your successor has the option to pick up where you left off and play out the rest of your turn and theirs. If you don't start, then the old save game just goes to the next player. If you trash the fort to total, and I mean total, unplayability, <laughs> for example, Magma Flood, oh god, <laughs> we'll revert to an old save, but overcoming setbacks is half the fun, so hopefully we won't have to do this. Pretty much anything goes, except for the following. Number one, using huge bridge hallways to kill demons sieging armies. And two, things that make later turns totally unplayable, such as flooding the world, mining adamantine, or removing bridges in creative ways so that the pathing eats it and the bridges can't be reconstructed and the fortress descends into an orgy of violence and starvation. If you do this, we roll back to an old save and everyone gets dwarven blue balls, which are shorter but stronger than the regular variety. <laughs> so nobody do this, please. <laughs> 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 
I don't want to play a turn, but can I be a dwarf in your fortress? You probably want Remy's awesome dwarf dream vacation thread. <laughs> what? <Aww. Okay. laughs> I'm not very good at this game. Can I still play? Hell yeah. <laughs> What's happened so far? You can check the linked turns below, but some of the highlights. Year one, not much. Started digging out, got the farm up, mandrel attack at the end. Year two, three fey moods in one year resulting in a table, an amulet made of the elusive red spindle, and a glass door. Year three, furry goes batshit with traps and floods the chasm with lava. Two more fey moods, toy hammer and a lunatic metalsmith who decides to take a bath in the moat. The elephants get their first taste of blood and they like it. <laughs> Year four, Locust starts arming the dwarves against the inevitable doom of the elephants and trades a rock ring to the elves for everything they own. The nobles arrive and promptly ban Red Spinnel for the first of many times, and the cobalt thieves start arriving in earnest with their own import-export plan. Another pair of fey moods ends up with one dwarf swimming in the moat and the other locked in his room without pants. And what, are the, what do these numbers mean? I'm not sure. It's dwarf fortress. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the new fortress site is truly in the puckered sphincter of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> the nearest civilization, if you can call it that, is a goblin citadel to the northeast. There's nothing out of the river yet, and the elephants have been pretty quiet. Too quiet. I see them out there, staring at me with those beady eyes, those gleaming tusks, looking over the river. Elephants can't swim, can they? Resume sometime in the fall. Merchants trying to dodge the elephants. The betting pool is up to ten stone blocks and a rat skull. We really need to make some coins. <laughs> I guess the trade depot is a good idea, but we'll see if we can finish it before they get here or get eaten by those bloody pachyderms. Oh, wow. There's, yeah, this is okay. Now, riddle me this. What sort of soft-headed, beard-gnawing merchants braves goblins, mountains, more goblins, and then those damn elephants to show up with nothing but one piece of cheese and two rolls of cloth? <laughs> These merchants, that's who. <laughs> I, I noticed one try to eat his own ear coming in. God knows what they're going to get out. <laughs> Fortunately, they're dumb enough to take some of these useless trinkets and trade. <laughs> Talc bracelet. Okay. Month timber, year 1050. Fall setting in, and it seems like a good time to take stock of where we are before winter gets around to killing us. Our bedrooms and dining rooms are finished. We're running low on booze, so we put a still together. I've never seen the lads put any building up so fast. <laughs> and we've got a butcher shop behind closed doors so the squeamish don't get put off their meat, seeing where it comes from. There's also the statue garden to get them away from throwing rocks across the river at the elephants, and the kennels so we can start training the dogs. One of the peasants has been working on smoothing the floors in the dining room. Looks like she's actually picked up a bit of knack for it. The farm's undertended, but we've got plenty of food, so I'm not too worried. <laughs> what does worry me, worry me is the wildlife. They're too quiet. I know they're planning something. <laughs> Coming soon, the conclusion to the so far uneventful first year. This is very rewarding. This is. This is I mean, I thought it, it sounded really cool, but I sort of thought that it wouldn't be that cool if I looked at like I, yeah. I thought it was just Paul making it cool. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he knows some secret thing, but I would never be able to ask. You know, like. Uh -huh. Right. But it is you know, exceptional. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Month Opal, ten fifty. Those fucking monkeys. I didn't even see them come in, but one of them ran off with something. <laughs> oh shit, they're not cute little chimpanzees. Oh no, these are big mandrels, pissed off and greedy. They feel justified in stealing anything not nailed down. And if they can pry something, for instance a dwarf's arm, loose, <laughs> it ain't nailed down in their book. <laughs> a whole horde of them busted in looking for gods know what. One of our war dogs went out to fight them off. Which didn't go so well. <laughs> Which didn't go so well. No, I guess his dog must be in a miasma somewhere there. <laughs> a few more war dogs ran out and attacked. I have to say I'm slightly terrified by them. One of the bitches actually gave birth while she was attacking. And her puppies joined in the carnage. Yes. Yes. <laughs> At the end of the day, the three mandrels were dead. And they took one war dog with them and injured another I mean, one and a puppy. I, mean, I, I never wanted to go to war before. But that's not going to yeah, give birth like... while attacking. <laughs> and the puppies joined in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad already. <laughs> okay. The poor dog's in sad shape. He keeps trying to find the dwarf who trained him and then passing out. <laughs> a few minutes later, he'll wake up, take another few steps, and pass out again. I'm tempted to have him put out of his misery by the butcher, but nobody will touch him and seems a sad way to treat someone who fought off the mandrels. <laughs> Part 5 by Mayor Guana. First Granite. 1052. I came to this dump looking for a royal fortress. Instead, I found this hole in the dirt, complete with useless hillbillies. <laughs> There's not one good crafter among this lot, and I hear there'll be a whole troop of unskilled immigrants coming in from the homelands any time now. Better stick to the basics and gather some food so we don't all die. Pull the damn lever. <laughs> oh no, I didn't think they'd be coming this early. 
Third, fell sight. 1052. Some blockhead is holding my carpenter shop hostage and demanding shells and wood. I've ordered the worthless immigrants to go fishing. Who knows, maybe one of them will find a dead turtle on the riverbank. (laughs) 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 Seventh fell sight. 1052. By the gods, another jeweler is possessed. I hope this asshole doesn't want crystal glass, too. <laughs> 26. Dude, I went to middle school with a girl whose name is Crystal Glass. So that's oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Her first name was Crystal and her last name was... That's Glenn. exactly true. Oh, okay. Every time you say that, I'm like, Crystal Glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah picturing yeah. the girl. Yeah. <laughs> Winter, anyway. Edit. This is in character. I just tend to... Uh, I mean, my character tends to feel stuck up and superior about how his designs are so much better than others. <laughs> <laughs> Spring. Granite. I've arrived. It's, it, it is an interesting <laughs> fortress setup, quite unlike the ones I'm used to designing. My first reaction is to set up and produce as much food as I can, until I realize that there's plenty of prepared food, and the fortress should hold out. Still, I shall be setting up the farms and growing plenty of plump helmets. I know from experience that overconfidence equals starvation, as far as food is concerned. After a few minutes of studying the layout, I decide that my talents will be best used in first making things more secure. The system my predecessor sets up looks workable, but in my experience, everything can be improved via liberal application of traps. Here's one half of the elephant, mandrel, whatever traps I have set up. I have channels blocking off one half of the map from the other, so the animals have to go through these if they want to get across. Also, that's a platinum statue of me on the water-blocked island. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) That. Yeah, right there it is. Yep. yep. <laughs> In time, weapons and armor must be forged. Personal note: my thoughts linger on the sinister herd of elephants I saw lurking across the river today, <laughs> and I am tempted to order the construction of a special catapult battery, which overlooks their territory, in order to train our siege operators. Unfortunately, such slaughter would surely agitate the many animal handlers who have taken it upon themselves to capture and tame these monstrosities for reasons I cannot fathom. <laughs> for now, there are more pressing matters to attend to. Immigrants, specifically 19 of them, with a mayor, a mason's guildmaster, and a house ferrite representative. Mayor Rel Attilorstith, personal note. I do not trust that name. (laughs) 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 Has settled into the noble quarters and is already demanding seven fortress guards. I am drafting assorted peasants and mechanics to fulfill this and using the three sword dwarf immigrants as the first squad in our new army. A ban on exporting red spinel items has just been introduced by the mayor for some reason. And on to part nine. Part this nine. Great. Yes, it is. <laughs> so good. By Locus. Cool. The mayor ended his mandate ban on exporting red spinel objects. Still a mystery as to why he had it in the first place. <laughs> Soon he'll probably be mandating something worse. <laughs> Until it finally bled to death. <laughs> Unib Besmarothur has been ecstatic lately. She was caught in the rain recently. She had a pretty decent drink lately. She had a satisfying sparring session recently. She talked with a friend lately. She admired a fine well lately. She was disgusted by a miasma lately. She has complained of thirst lately. She has slept without a proper room recently. She made a friend recently. She admired a fine, tastefully arranged door lately. She had a fine drink lately. Unib Besmarothur likes granite ballista parts, and mules for their stubbornness. When possible, she prefers to consume horse and dwarven wine. She absolutely detests rats. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. Can you imagine like a writer having that character? Like, it's oh, God, yeah. Like, it's, yeah. It's and so and that's, it looks like it's, it's generating the game and then just yeah. accumulates. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here are the conditions. Mm-hmm especially lax. A fisher dwarf nearly starved to death when a tower cap grew and blocked his path, locking him in the mill room. Fortunately, his cries were heard before it was too late, and a dwarf armed with an axe struck the mushroom down. Our mayor has mandated that we make two red spinel items. Perhaps we had none before, so his export ban felt incomplete. (laughs) A group of frogmen leapt from the river today, killing a war dog and a stray cat. They were quickly struck down by a member of the Fortress Guard and various peasants. The Jack of All Operations. Autumn has ended. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Part 11 by Locus. First Moonstone, 1054, early winter. Due to laziness and poor time management skills on the part of the work dwarves, the red spinel item mandate missed its deadline. The, <laughs> ma- <laughs> the mayor expressed disappointment and enacted a new mandate forbidding the export of jet items. 
and important dwarves. Also due to laziness and poor time management skills on the part of the work dwarves, no clear glass was ever produced, and Os Erdiminal went insane. He started babbling at dwarves nearby, then ran halfway across the bridge, dove into the channel, removed his pants, and went streaking haphazardly across the hallways until he reached his room. He has been locked in to prevent his lack of guard from upsetting the more sensitive lady dwarves. Note, he later died of thirst. (laughs) 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 Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. For the less well, functional aspects of the fort, I have begun. Yeah, what you say? I just like it. Yeah, yeah. I have begun construction of a complex of large tombs to hold the remains of the previous rulers of the fort. She needs alcohol to get to the working day. She likes working outdoors and grumbles only mildly at inclement weather. <laughs> Mega Grendel. She needs alcohol to get through the working day. Uh-huh. <laughs> Kalo, she needs alcohol to get to the rookie. That seems like a <laughs> They're all vegetarian. Locus, he needs alcohol to get to the rookie day. <laughs> and a map of the fortress. Part 12, by Stark Raven Mad. Journal of Raw Stark Raven Mad, Swaringen, late winter, 1054. So there I am, last night, tending my tavern in Kinmelbill, when in walks this slick back noble looking cocksucker and, t- <laughs> and, and tells me I have the great honor of accepting the overseer position for one of our outposts. Honor, my hairy dwarven ass. More than likely, someone found out about that gold strike I had my men working out in the hills of sorrow, and this is their way of getting me out of the picture while they move in on it. Well, what can I do? The order is signed by the king himself, straight from Kettle fucking Logamfukuk. Which means any attempt by yours truly to wriggle out of this great honor is going to end up with me getting a hammering from the captain of the royal guard. Nice situation, eh, chief? Well, painter damage don't end the world. He's doing a swear engine from a a Deadwood, which I suppose you haven't seen. No. TV show. No, no idea. That's one of the that's one of the best things I've ever seen. Yeah, Claire was recommending it, and she oh, like doesn't God. even have electricity or like water. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know yeah. how she watched this, but she's like, no, it's good. You got to. <laughs> no, I've never seen. Anything, yeah, so. seriously, seriously, it is like Shakespeare. But anyway, yeah, Swerdin, like the guy, this is British actor. He won like a like the Emmy Award for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just it's, yeah, it's just cocksucker. Every like other word, <laughs> it's but it's oh anyway anyway. Well, pain or damage don't end the world. Or despair or fucking beatings. The world ends when you're dead. Until then, you got more punishment in store. Send it like a dwarf and give some back. That's what I always say. I take a look at the maps, and sure enough, this outpost is stuck out in the middle of nowhere, smack on the smooth points of pride. Boat murdered, they call it, a name which don't bode well for much of fucking anything. <laughs> this morning, I'm getting my supplies for the trip together, and what do I see but a bunch of hoopelhead cocksuckers loading up their wagons, and lo and behold, those horses are all pointed the same way as mine. I make a few quiet inquiries, and they're all headed to fucking boat murder, too. I set out with all haste, figuring it would be best if I got a little head start on these assholes, so maybe I could get the place in some sort of order before they get there. Now I'm taking a quick breather, and I figured I should keep some sort of record of this trip, especially since I'm not so sure that the plan isn't for me to be fucking stabbed in the back and end up thrown into a bottomless chasm or something. Document what's happening, you see. Then at least if I get bumped off, there will be some record of how it happened, and maybe my men back in the capital can't get revenge for my poor damned soul. I probably won't be writing much more in this thing until I get to boat murdered. I need to move quick to stay ahead of the rapid pack of immigrants breathing down my neck. I swear I can hear the mules already. Early spring, 1055. Well, I made it to boat murdered, and my initial impressions can be set forth in three words. What. The. Fuck. (laughs) I'm going to include a few quick sketches of the place, artist impressions if you will, so excuse me if these are a little rough, but I have to fucking try to get my mind around what I'm facing here. (laughs) To begin with, all of our fucking workshops and trade goods are sitting outside in the fucking rain. <laughs> One of the previous overseers must have been some sort of shallow-dwelling skygazer because having our production out here is just inhumane to the poor hoopleheads who have to stand out there. I almost went fucking crazy having to be under the goddamn open sky for the whole trip out here instead of in a nice, safe cavern. And some of these poor bastards have been working out in the open for four years now. Four years standing out in the rain, or even worse, under that horrifying, yawning expanse of blue open sky. Fuck that, I'm moving everything inside. Oh, and you see all those E's I drew down there at the bottom? Elephants. The previous overseer must have had some sort of sick fucking fascination with them, because we have elephants everywhere. Elephants in cages, elephants in the halls, elephants shitting in the dining room, everywhere. (laughs) I don't know what to do with them. I guess start butchering them and hope they make a good roast. 
You may also notice the lack of a road or bridge to the west. Apparently, in an excess of fucking caution, the previous overseers blocked off the entire mountain with rivers, leaving no trade route for the human caravans. I'm going to fix that as well. I'm a businessman at heart, and the caravans will come through before I'm done here. Most of the poor bastards living here are in two square rooms, with a chest but not even a fucking cabinet. I'm not even going to try and fix that for the current population, but I think we can do a little better for the new cocksuckers on the way. <laughs> here we have a gigantic hall where the roof is held up by fucking matchsticks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and a stiff breeze is going to make the whole thing collapse. I don't know what kind of suicidal maniac put this together, and I'm not going to change it now. But you can bet I'm not sticking one fucking foot in there. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> Part 13 by Stark Raven Mad. Room full of levers. I don't know what any of them do, and I'm not going to try and figure it out. With the way this place is set up, any one of them can make the whole place collapse in like an accordion. Armok, help me. To start with, I'm going to remove our food production facilities over here, near where the farm is. Kitchen, brewery, butcher, fish cleaner, the whole nine yards. I'll get some food storage over here, too. Oh, did I mention the current dining room seats eight? And we have 74 fucking dwarves? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to work on that, too. <laughs> New dining room and great hall will be over here, across from the food production. New workshop area and good storage is going to be over here, south of the Hall of Suicide. <laughs> Should make life a little easier for the metalsmiths, too. As if you couldn't tell from the excess of traps and walling a fortress off from the world, the previous overseers seem to have a bit of the military mindset. Me, I'm a trades dwarf at heart. All these smelters have been going full force, pounding out steel and iron for weapons of fucking war. I instructed them to change their focus a bit. Make platinum bars, make platinum bars, make platinum bars. <laughs> Elven caravan is here. Of course, with no road or bridge, I don't know if the pointy-eared cocksuckers will ever even make it into the depot. Sorry, elves. <laughs> Part 14 by Stark Raving Matt. Well, the immigrants are here. We also got a broker and some pompous asshole claiming to be the head of the Craft Dwarves Guild. I think he's just looking for free room without any doing any work. But what can you do? 22 more dwarves, counting the nobles. This should be fun. Gonna draw out some new bedrooms north of the suicide hall. <laughs> the new broker immediately endears himself to me by mandating the production of toy forges. I'm tempted to tell him that I mandate he go fuck himself, but I think better of it and just put in the work order for him. This is so great. This is a, yeah, this is only... Late spring, 1055. The dwarves working here are the laziest bunch of hoopleheads I've ever seen. If they aren't drinking, they're sleeping it off. <laughs> or storing an item in the work pile, boss. <laughs> Which seems to be code for fucking carrying around things from place to place instead of doing some real work. <laughs> yeah. That's very much like real work and real boss talk. <laughs> I have six fucking carpenters. I asked for this workshop to be built three months ago. You think anyone gets around to it? It's a ten minute job but they're too busy to do it. Busy doing what? I don't fucking know. Since without the workshops they can't carpenter anything. <laughs> I have four miners. Two of them apparently sleep 20 hours a day. <laughs> is so injured he can't walk, and the last claims to be the retired ruler of this place, but he's the only guy who actually does any digging. <laughs> Noticing that we have a military of three, not counting our fortress guards, I go ahead and draft a few more, giving me two squads so I can rotate who is on duty and who is slacking off in the barracks. The mayor just stormed in my office and demanded I stop the export of red spinel items. <laughs> <laughs> Considering I've never seen a fucking red spinel and I have no idea what one is, I told him I was sure we could accommodate his request. <laughs> Man, the expert of red spinel is private. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 Apparently, 
Apparently, the Craft Dwarf Union rules preclude me from directly asking for anything specific, including the fucking mini forges that our beloved broker storms into my office every day and demands. The best I can do is tell him to make toys and hope they figure out that that means mini forges and not boats or hammers or axes or puzzle boxes or all this other shit that I'm now buried under, and not a single <laughs> mini forge. And so the broker is pissed at me, and there isn't shit all I can do about it since I wouldn't know how to make a fucking mini forge to save my life. I need a drink. Part 15 by Stark Raving Mad. Early summer, 1055. Picture of the new food preparation area, new dining, which I'm about to have engraved, and new elephant in a fucking cage storage room. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had three trappers, a profession that was only going to get them killed, and Armak knows the last thing we need is more fucking trapped animals anyway. I told them to make clothes instead, since half the dwarves here are walking around in tatters, and they're pissed about it. The manager demanded a clear glass window in his room. To fucking look at what, I asked him. Your room doesn't have a hole leading to the outside. Your room doesn't have a view of anything. The best I can do is put in a window that is two feet away from a stone wall. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he wants a window. <laughs> Fine. I hope the cocksucker falls through. <laughs> we have some really messed up room that serves as a bedroom, dining room, office, <laughs> and everything for all the nobles at once. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started coming out in some real noble rooms deeper in the mountain for the next batch of nobles to show up <laughs> human caravan is here but unfortunately I couldn't get the road built in time so no wagons I'll have it through before the year is up though the humans bring me a load of meat and cloth I trade them an elephant in a cage for everything they own <laughs> have fun with that one assholes <laughs> Part 16 by Stark Raven Mad. I finished making the broker's mini forges. He immediately issued a mandate that no mini forges could be exported. <laughs> I guess the cocksucker really likes his fucking mini forges. <laughs> the road is through. Welcome to Greater Society, Boat Murdered. Oh, for the love of... Sure, why not? More migrants. Come on in, cocksuckers. More of the merrier. <laughs> I finally figured out something useful to do with all the trapped animals. The Barnum and Bailey Happy Time Zoo, pictured below, still under construction. Friends, if you'd like to look at elephants or mandrels or more <laughs> elephants <laughs> and mandrels... <laughs> is this ever the place for you? <laughs> elephants and mandrels. Or more fucking elephants around. <laughs> Part 17 by Stark Raven Mad. Autumn, 1055. I told our engravers to engrave the walls and floor of the new dining room. They proceeded to decorate the room with some of the most horrifying shit I've ever seen. I mean, fuck, dwarves are trying to eat in there. <laughs> engraved on the wall is a finely designed image of a dwarf by Torrit Dog Regnigum. The dwarf is dead. <laughs> We've got a little elephant issue happening down south. I'm starting to understand why the previous owner had a million of them in cages. One or two got pissed and they killed someone, and now the dwarves are trying to get the items from the guys that died. And the elephants are just running wild over everyone. A couple of the elephants got caught in the ruining cage traps, but one or two got through. The brave military men of Bolt Murdered assembled by the front gate, and they braved themselves for a rush at the mighty elephants. And it was about then when the fucking dwarven caravan arrived. I ordered the military to hold fast. Let the caravan guardsmen get themselves slaughtered by the elephants before we do. Which was also right about the time when a goblin thief jumped out and got clobbered by a stonefall trap. So the merchants arrived to see blood and vomit everywhere, us hauling corpses en masse to the graveyard, a couple rampaging elephants. <laughs> Welcome to fucking boat murder. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the miasma. It's just miasma. Oh, <laughs> Hope you like miasma. <laughs> yeah. Part 18. What's that? This is just... This, this is... Yeah. This is uh, by Stark Raving Mad. This elephant has killed so many guys, he has a fucking full-on last name and title now. But one of the dogs finally knocked him unconscious. About 16 more elephants have showed up to support their buddies. <laughs> the funny thing is the elephants keep trying to leave, like they'll go down the passageway back toward the outside. And then some fucking dwarf wanders in to get the dead guy's pants or whatever, and it pisses the elephants right the fuck off, and they come charging back up the passage again. <laughs> Guess they better put in a work order for some more fucking coffins. <laughs> Despite me telling the dwarves to stay inside and stop going out there, they continue to try and recover corpses. <laughs> it's time for harsher measures. I told everyone to stop fucking gathering everything. But it doesn't matter what I tell these morons, they're bound to determine to march to their deaths. 
Harsher fucking measures are necessary. I install two front doors and lock them. No one gets in or out. Boat murder is closed until further notice. This basically stops the elephant problem for now as a temporary measure. I'm hoping they get bored when they figure out no more fucking toys are coming to play and wander off. We lost about 20 doors to this debacle. Of course, just to add insult to fucking injury, about 17 snake men jump out of the river. We don't really lose any there except a couple of dogs and cats, though. Yeah, you elephant assholes <laughs> choking at miasma. <laughs> Part 19 by Stark Green Mad. Winter, 1055. I have started Project Fuck the World, a top-secret attempt to funnel magma to the outside. I'll kill those elephants. I'll kill all those fucking elephants. <laughs> I don't know if I'll have time to finish it, though. I've also started Project Get Me the Fuck Out of Boat Murdered, and I'm hoping to finish that one by the end of the year. Remember how I told you that I ran into some miner claiming to be the former ruler of the place? Well, that's just how the sneaky bastard got out of here. I finally figured it out, and I'm taking the same route as soon as I can. See, I just convinced some poor cocksucker to say he's me. Enough pot, I'm gonna go for it. And then I slip right the fuck out of town. Easy as pie. I already found someone who looks enough like me for it to work. I just have to wait for the right moment to escape this elephant-ridden hellhole. <laughs> the elephants don't seem to be leaving. They love their stench and miasma-filled tunnel. So still, no one can go outside. All the wood is outside, which means my carpenters don't have a lot to do right now. But I know if I crack the front door for them to get the wood, they'll go fucking <laughs> running down to the elephant tunnel to say hello to their gigantic, angry, tusked friends. On the brighter side, we have plenty of beds, since most of the previous fucking occupants are now dead, so we don't need the carpenters to make much right now. And, you know, sometimes you think it really can't get much worse, and then it does. A vile force of darkness has arrived. Uh -oh. The goblins are upon us. Uh -oh. Hello, boys. Are you kidding me? I'm supposed to be scared of little fucking goblin siege? I'm already trapped in the fortress by four legendary elephants. <laughs> Shit, I'm just hoping you assholes manage to kill the elephants for me. I'll give you a fucking medal. The worst thing you can do to me would be open the door, causing the, causing the lemming rush of death down the elephant tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the elephants don't mind the goblins. They're best friends. <laughs> oh, you, you here to beat up the dwarves? Well, by all means, go on through. Be our guest. We'll just be out here chewing on these dwarf bones if you need us. <laughs> the goblins are totally confused by all this and have decided to go stand around by the channel. <laughs> hey, the sign on the door says closed. Shit, bub. I thought you said it was open until 9 on Saturdays. What do we do? Maybe we should ask the elephants. They seem to have killed a lot of them. <laughs> The goblins just lazily take a few pot shots at a stray cat wandering about the front, and then they just stay down in the elephant tunnel. I think they're starting their own town up there. Mm. Elephants and goblins <laughs> living together in peace and harmony, <laughs> joined only by burning hatred for dwarves. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Operation Fuck the World has failed. I struck water with my aqueduct, and the channel of the outside is now filled with water. Whoever comes after me may try and continue the project. They'll just have to route to a different tunnel. Or they may try to build up the military enough to where they can do a frontal assault on the elephant and goblin army. <laughs> me, I'm past fucking caring. You see, spring has sprung, and I'm taking my fucking chance to get out of town. That poor sucker will take my name, and by the time they figure out he's not me, and he's just some hoople head who can't run a wagon, and much less a fortress, I'll be long gone. New name, new town, new fortune. Nothing's worth staying here. I'm leaving this journal in the desk in the overseer's office. To whoever finds this journal, good fucking luck to you. The place isn't a total loss, just so long as you, you know, don't open the front door. <laughs>